all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at three of the newest DC Multiverse 6 inch action figures from Mattel. Now the three specifically I'm looking at today, all part of the Killer Croc Collect and Connect wave, are Red Hood, Red Robin, and Dick Grayson as Batman. And you can see all three figures come in the same style that we have become accustomed to with the multiverse line, the blue boxes with the names up at the top. You've got the figures clearly displayed. Off to the side, you've got the artwork for the character. And then down below, you've got the multiverse logo. Then on the sides of the packaging, you have the same kind of artwork that was on the front. And then on the back of the packaging, you again have artwork, brief bios in multiple languages for each character. So here's a look at Red Hood, here's a look at Red Robin, and finally here's a look at the Dick Grayson Batman. And then down below that you have a look at all the figures in the wave that you need to get in order to complete that Killer Croc Collect and Connect figure. Alright, let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now as far as the Collect and Connect pieces go, the way it breaks down is you get a leg with Red Hood, you get the second leg with Batman, and then with the Red Robin figure you get the left arm. And I will be taking a look at the Killer Croc figure in its own review, so be sure to check back for that. Okay, now for figure specific accessories, starting with Batman, you get two heads with this one. You get the mast head, which is attached to the figure when you take it out of the packaging. You know, it looks pretty basic. You've got the Batman mask with the whited out eyes, good skin tone. Um, you know, so really nothing special, but nothing bad about that one. And then the second one is the unmasked Dick Grayson head. And I really like this head sculpt. It's probably the nicest thing about the figure. I think they captured the likeness of Dick Grayson uh, pretty good with this. I like the way the hair is sculpted. You've got a little bit light blue wash in the hair. And then the eye, the paint on the eyes looks really good and good skin tone and everything. So definitely, I think they did a really good job with that. Now here's a look at the regular mast head on the figure and you know, it looks pretty good overall the paint the dark blue on the mask matches up with the rest of the figure you know they the neck piece and the cape and the gloves and everything so I think they did a good job with that now before I show you the Dick Grayson unmasked head sculpt on the figure I also wanted to uh, present you with the other accessory that comes with this figure and that is Batman's mask that you can put basically you know you put this on his neck so it looks like the mask is pulled back and I'll show you that in a second and this is just made with a rubber material Material. Okay, and here's a look at the unmasked head on the figure and overall it seems to fit pretty good and there's a look at the pulled back mask and you know you don't have to have it on the figure's neck you can actually you know have him hold it in his hand so it looks like he's taking the mask off completely the cape is not removable though so um, it would have been maybe kind of cool if you could take the cape off as well but overall you know i'm definitely glad they included this unmasked head and the pulled back mask moving on to red hood so red hood comes with three different pairs of hands so you get a pair of grip hands and then you get a pair of grip hands as well but they're a little more open and then you get a pair of closed fisted hands it almost looks like these hands are made for holding like a gun or something unfortunately they did not include any weapons he has guns in his holsters but they're not removable and i'll show you that in a minute so i would have actually rather had just like one pair of hands and and guns that you could remove from his uh gun holster but as it is you just get the three hands and each of the pairs of hands have the gray and then you've got the metallic silver there the little circles on the knuckles so that detailing is pretty good but again like these two uh, different grip hands are kind of redundant since they didn't include any weapons and then finally for red hood you get two head sculpts so you get the one with the helmet the red helmet and the detailing on that is pretty good it's a glossy type red paint that they used and you've got some line work sculpted on there and he's got the whited out eyes with the black around it so overall I think they did a good job and then we get this well not completely unmasked head he's still wearing the red mask over the eyes but again I think the detailing on this is pretty good and like with the Dick Grayson head sculpt you've got some blue wash in the hair there and I like the way they've sculpted the hair he still has the whited out eyes with the mask and the little bit of black around the eyes which again I think looks pretty good and the skin tone is decent as well okay so here's a look at the helmeted head on the figure and I think it looks pretty good uh, matches up nicely with the coat and everything and again I like the detailing and all 
And also you can see here's the look at those gun holsters uh, with the guns in them. However, again, those guns are not removable, which I find really annoying being that like, you know, guns is his main thing. You know, these, these are his main weapons. So it would have been nice and should have been pretty easy to make those removable and have something that he could actually hold in his hands. And then here's a look at the unhelmeted head, which again, I think looks pretty good on the figure. You know, so it's really down to which you prefer, either the helmet or without the helmet, but both head sculpts I think work well with this figure. For Red Robin, we get two different pairs of hands. So we get a pair of closed fisted hands and then we get a pair of grip hands. And those are for holding his bow staff that he also comes with. And with the hands, you've got the black and then you've got the green highlights on the top there, on the top of the hands and on the knuckles. And you have that on both sets. And then finally, as I mentioned, Robin also comes with a bow staff and this is just done with a gray plastic. Mine at least came fairly straight out of the packaging and you've got a little bit of sculpting detail on the hand grips there. And it's done with a fairly flexible plastic. So, you know, if yours does happen to come out warped, you could probably take a hair dryer and heat it up and straighten it out. But again, for mine at least, it did come out of the packaging fairly straight. And as long as you have the grip hands on the figure, he'll hold the staff pretty well. You can either have him hold it in both hands or just in one. Though if you're going to do it in one, it's better if you have him actually hold it at the grip, at the sculpted grip. He will hold it tighter that way. Okay, now for the figures themselves, starting with the Batman figure. And this is probably my least favorite of the three. And my main complaints about it, I, I know this is supposed to be Dick Grayson as Batman, so he's not supposed to be as big as, as Bruce Wayne. I get that. But I feel like, you know, he looks very scrawny. And in part, it might just be because of this cape. I really don't like this cape. It's very uh, small on the figure. It is a soft goods cape. And, you know, they just didn't make it very wide. So it doesn't help with, you know, making him look like, you know, Batman should. So that's one of my big complaints. And then also I feel like the feet are way too big on this figure. I don't know, the body's scrawny and then he's got these really big feet. So that's my second complaint. Otherwise, you know, it's not bad. It's pretty basic. You've just got the gray and then the dark blue uh, colors. You've got some metallic gold on his belt. You've got some pretty good sculpting detail on the belt. And then the bat symbol on his chest there, which is black, is just painted on there. And he's got the sculpting detail on the gloves. But again, to me, um, you know, the combination of just being scrawnier looking and then having the really uh, thin cape and then the really big feet I just don't think makes for a very good look for this figure. Next up we've got the red hood figure and I've already told you my main complaint with this one and that's that they didn't make the guns there and the holsters removable. I just feel like that's really ridiculous but otherwise this is a pretty solid figure. So we've already talked about the head sculpt and the jacket is, it's a brown jacket and you've got some metallic silver for the zipper pockets on the front there and otherwise you know it's pretty basic but looks decent. The jacket itself is a separate piece and and made with a soft plastic so you can pull it back and you can see his symbol, his red bat symbol underneath there. You have the break down the middle, which is comic book accurate, and then they've painted some black lines. The symbol itself is also painted. They just painted that on there, but it looks pretty uh, clean. The lines and everything are pretty straight, no paint blemishes or anything. Uh, same with all this uh, black line work that goes down the front of the figure. And then you've got the shin guards with the metallic silver and the black on the boots. So that looks pretty good. Again, you've got the gun holster. The gun holsters are separate pieces. You know, like I said, it looks like these guns should be removable, but they're not. They're sculpted in there. And the guns are just done with the metallic silver. So, and you know, overall, not too bad at detailing. You've got some metallic silver on the bu buckle and such. So, you know, it looks pretty good. Like I said, other than the fact that the guns are not removable, I think this is a pretty solid figure. Okay, and then finally we have the Red Robin figure, and out of the three, this is probably my favorite. So first of all, with the head sculpt, I think they've done a good job of capturing the likeness of Tim Drake, an older Tim Drake, but I believe that's how he appears in the comics now. I'm not actually familiar with him in this outfit. Uh, the last time I saw him, when he first became Red Robin, he wore a different outfit, an outfit that was actually red and had like wing a cape that was like wings. Yeah, but uh, I'm not familiar with him going back to this, essentially his original Robin outfit, slightly modified with the two R's on the chest and such. But I assume this is pretty accurate. 
you've got the as I mentioned the two R's there on his chest and those are actually sculpted so I like that they sculpted that and didn't just paint that you've got these added black marks on the sides of the torso that's a little bit different from the original Robin costume that he wore you've got the cape which is done with a fairly hard plastic this cape is it's not very bendable and you've got the black on the outer side with the yellow stripes up there at the neck and then you've got the yellow on the underside it got a little bit of sloppiness on the yellow stripes here at the neck and then I've got a scratch mark down here on the bottom of the cape but otherwise you know paint applications while basic seem to be pretty good the shirt is red that's the only red on the costume uh, which is kind of funny since he calls himself Red Robin now and then you've got the green and black on the uh, sleeves uh, the short sleeves of the shirt and you've got these uh, wrist guards that are green with the black gloves so that all looks pretty good and then he's got the utility belt which is a separate piece it's a bright yellow you've got the pouches which look good and then you've got the black on the legs you do have a little bit of added green like up here on the upper thighs and up here right under the belt on his crotch and then uh, you've got the shin guards and the knee pads which are sculpted and again done with green and then you also have some green on the bottom of the shoes okay now the red hood figure comes in right about six and three quarter inches tall batman or dick grayson is a little bit taller especially if you count to the top of his uh, ears and that comes in just under seven inches and then the red robin figure is pretty close to the same height as the red hood figure again coming in around six and three quarter inches tall Okay, and for just a few comparisons, first of all, here's a look at the Multiverse Rebirth Batman, along with Red Robin, Dick Grayson, Batman, Red Hood, Batwoman, and Burnside Batgirl. And here's a comparison of just the Rebirth Batman, Bruce Wayne, and the Dick Grayson Batman. And I do not have the recently released Nightwing that they, Mattel did that came in the Ninja Batman wave. I do not have that figure to give you a comparison. For Red Hood, here's a comparison of the DC Collectibles New 52 version. Now, I would say the DC Collectible one looks nicer. However, the multiverse figure does have better articulation. Now, here's a comparison of Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and Damian Wayne. Here's a comparison of the Tim Drake figure with the spoiler figure, the multiverse spoiler figure from Mattel. And then finally, here's a comparison of the DC Collectibles New 52 Red Robin figure. And this is the outfit I think of when I think of the Red Robin character. Now for articulation, we'll start out with the Red Robin, which actually I think has the best articulation of the three because they gave him double hinged elbows as opposed to single elbows. So with him, you can turn his head to the left and to the right. He really doesn't have much in the way of up and down movement though and no head pivot with the arms you can get the arm out pretty good there now this cape because it is such a hard plastic and I don't know if this is something you'd want to do but you can actually have it's such a hard plastic that you can pull the cape out and it'll stick out like that but as far as rotating the arm all the way around um, you do want to pull that back because again it's such a hard plastic you've got a bicep swivel you get again you do get a double hinged elbow with this one so you can bend his elbow about that much and then you've got rotation there with the hands and hinges so up and down movement now i've got some paint scratching on the hinge joint so that might be something you do want to be wary of he's got an ab crunch joint so he can crunch forward pretty good there and then he can crunch back or look back pretty good there as well you also get a waist swivel with this one with the legs he can do the splits good and then you can get the leg forward pretty good the pouches on the belt limit some of that movement but he can still get the leg up pretty good there and then you can do the leg out and back you get a thigh swivel you get a double jointed knee so good bending there at the knee and then with the feet you have hinges so up and down movement but you don't really have much in the way of ankle pivot or rotation and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet now with the batman figure it's pretty much the same as robin you do get a little more back and forth movement with the head that you you know that you didn't get with robin but as i mentioned before this one does not have double hinged elbows so you can bend the elbow about that much it's kind of ridiculous that you know alfred 
got double hinged elbows, but Batman or Dick Grayson doesn't. You got the ab crunch joint. He can crunch forward about that much and look back about that much. You got the waist swivel. With this one, you can do the splits good. You can get the leg forward good. You can do the leg back. You've got the thigh swivel. You've got the double jointed knees. You got the hinges on the feet. You really, again, don't get a whole lot in the way of ankle pivot. This one, you can rotate the foot more. And then you've got two pickles on the bottom of the feet. And you also, with the hands, you have the hinges and the rotation, just like with all the figures. And then finally with Red Hood, you can turn the head to the left and the right. He's got some back and forth movement, probably not as good as Batman, but better than Robin. No head pivot. And then with the arms, you can get the arm out that much. You've got the rotation. You've got the bicep swivel. Again, like with Batman, you only get the single hinged elbow. So that's annoying. And then you've got rotation with the hands. You've got the hinges. You've got an ab crunch joint, so he can crunch forward pretty good. And he can look back about that much. The jacket does limit some of that. You've got a waist swivel. With the legs, he can do the splits good. You can get the leg forward about that much, and then you can do the leg back about that much. You've got a thigh swivel, you've got the double jointed knee, so good bending there. And then again, you've got the hinges on the feet, but not much in the way of ankle pivot and two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So out of the three figures, my least favorite, as I said before, is the Batman figure. I just, I don't like the overall look of it. I think the feet look too big, the cape too small, and I, I'm just not really digging it. I do like the Red Hood figure. I think it's pretty decent. It would have been really nice if they had made the guns and the holsters removable. I find that very annoying. Also, double hinged elbows would be nice. The Red Robin figure is my favorite of the three. The overall look of it, I like the best. Paint applications are pretty solid. I do have some scraping at the joints, but otherwise, you know, I think it looks good and it has the best articulation of the three as well. Now, all three of these figures, along with the rest of the wave, has started to see a release. They're showing up at places like Walmart. We'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And of course, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.